drones, its revolution and evolution. And this is to be presented by Sri Lanka's most recognized and highest rewarded innovator has already won three gold medals and a silver medal at the Innovators' Competition staged in Geneva, Switzerland. He starts his career in 1990 by winning the National Inventors' title and also winning the title again in 2012. He is currently working as a consultant to CIC Precision Agriculture and runs his own research firm in India. He's also the senior research scientist uh, for the Sri Lanka Institute of Nanotechnology. Could you now please put your hands together and welcome the renowned inventor and senior research scientist Manju Gunavardhana on stage. Now everyone knows about drones and we've been discussing about drones in, in our judge the panel also. It's a very dynamic subject in the current context. We are talking about drones, we manufacture drones, we do coding for drones, and we have the pioneer, uh, pioneering person in this country for drone development, Professor Muna Singha from University of Moratua. My subject is not producing drones. What I'm trying to do is to put drones at work. That is the most important thing we are talking about when it comes to sustainability as well as how to take this country into another level with appropriate technology. Okay. The drone business is very big, as we know. If you can remember, year 2001-2002 era, drones were not in our Google search engines in that much. UAV was there. We have been using UAVs for various applications, especially for military applications. And it was not in our reach. It was very expensive. We used to look at them in TV programs, in action movies, and in Sri Lanka Air Force ap applications and operations. But now, after 10, 15 years, drones are everywhere. You have toy drones, you have small racing drones, you have Panthems, you have Inspires, you have Matris, various types of drones trying to solve various types of problems in the basically around us. It's big business and extremely important numerous applications. If you can see wind turbine inspection to first aid to agriculture, security and surveillance, millions of applications. But we only know about very few applications. As Sri Lankans, we only use drones currently in the general context for cinematography and, and videography, photography, and in these artistic areas. But what I'm trying to talk to you today is not that. We have five major areas of drone applications selected to go forward as a business in this country. One is drone service providership. We are not going to do that due to a couple of regulatory problems. Then agriculture, my area now, that is my pet area, and I'm focusing more into that area. Surveying and mapping, you can see what we have done in very critical instances in this country. Construction and education. These two are not that prominent. We don't work in that, but those are the areas that we really want to put our fingers in. Okay, let's see the practical applications, and the very critical things we have done with drones. The day-to-day -day drones now actually solving mission-critical, life-saving, and demanding applications. You can remember 2017, this year, last month, 14th, noon. This happened in Sri Lanka. We were talking about solid waste management, we were talking about garbage dumps, how to manage garbage, how to do various things about garbage, but this problem happened. Okay, now this is a problem. <laughs> so. Battery is going, but my battery is still there, but I'll talk now. Let's talk about it. This Mitotamula problem happened. I'll try to talk a little bit more about it. So this Mitotamula problem is not just an avalanche. People think that Kunukanda Kadagi na Geval Udatavaruna Geval Yatavuna, no, it didn't happen. It was not the phenomenon happened in this Kunukanda. 
It's a different geoengineering uh, problem happened. This is called deep-seated slope, slope failures. The top part came down onto the halfway of the Kunukanda. Then that pressure released through these foundations of these houses. These houses simply pushed away for 40, 42, the worst case scenario, 47 meters from its initial places. OK. This is the result. You can see. If you can see that the, the corner picture, the red color small house, is now on another house, nicely pushed away for 46 meters and seated on another house. Then what we have done is, we, this is a simple thing, we flew drones, and these flying, these drone operations are 100% autonomous. We have no joysticks, we don't do anything. We demarcate our flight plans, we decide our flight altitudes, wind direction, according to the wind direction, we decide our flight paths, we decide on our payloads, it is not only RGB camera we are talking about, we have various types of payloads, we started flying on the Mitra Muller Dump, and started, un we, we wanted to understand the setting first, because we were not in a position to go, then we wanted to go, see it from the aerial perspective, and to understand the damage first. We, in the sense, I worked with the three forces, especially with the army engineers, and, we, and the commandos, we were not in a position to go, because pe people were not that happy for us to come. They were writing, we get to go into this level and started getting these pictures. Those are geotagged, high-resolution images. Then, with 120, 125 images nicely put together, this is a f very first georeferenced orthomosaic image we created. This is, a ge this is a one step ahead from a general photography. This image got a complete georeferenced uh, data, each and every pixel got a different GPS location, and the accuracies are in the level of one to two centimeters, because we were using special techniques like real-time real -time kinematics on our aircraft. And this is the setup. We flew, collected in all the images, put images together, and came up with that particular full image. With that image, we started gathering information. With that image, the entire rescue teams started taking decisions. Then we came up, this is a digital elevation model with the altitude. Now with this data set, now from here onwards, it's not a picture or an image, those are data we are talking about. With this data, we are in a position to create contour maps with 25 to 20 to 25 centimeter contour intervals, which is an impossible task for general land surveyors to do. With that, we started seeing the real altitudes, the gradients, and the danger areas. You can see how it evolves. This is on the 15th. Then we changed the sensor from general RGB sensor into a multispectral imager, started getting a different set of data, which is the invisible part of it. We started measuring near-infrared coming from the, as, as a reflectance from the garbage dump, and we started measuring the wetness of the, 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 the garbage pit on the surface. The wetness is very important because this problem happened because of the heavy amount of water absorbed by the garbage dump, which is an extremely porous uh, dump. Once you get too much of water, the hydrostatic pressure created, and the entire problem happens with this. Then we wanted to see the water retention in the garbage dump. Now, generally, if you go by foot to the garbage dump, this is impossible. You are not in a position to go because most of the areas were not that static and stabilized. There were dynamic areas, there were small breakdowns as a secondary breakdowns after two days even. Those are the drones we used. We used a Mavic Pro for the first time for an industrial mission, but not the Mavic Pro camera. We installed this Parrot multispectral imager with red edge and near-infrared spectral bands. These two spectral bands can come up with different indices where we can measure the amount of water or the wetness. 
we are using them in agriculture, but we simply use these agriculture drones and agriculture sensor packs to get the wetness on the garbage dump. This is a simple calculation. We, we are using Pix4D, which is a renowned and one of the best in the world type uh, Swiss software, to evaluate or to calculate various types of indices in order to take decisions. Then we have developed this 3D model of the dump. Then people started seeing the reality of the problem. 20 years ago, the, the municipality council wanted government to give only two acres to dump. Today it is more than 18 hectares of garbage evolved in that aspect also. Then pe the first time the Sri Lankans started seeing this problem as a real problem. As you can see, it is 48.8 meters the crown, the topmost place. Right. These people simply took the entire Kolambakunu and ended up with this. You should understand that also. This is the other perspective. And you can see, this is not working, I'm very sorry. The small brown color patch on your right hand side near the breakage point, and that's a very unique place. With all the technologies and the available sensors, we have detected an underground pond inside the garbage dump underneath of that small brown color patch. And we have then a couple of experts came from the World Bank. They were seriously appreciating our work because we, we detected that area with an excessive amount of water un, under the surface. And there's a breakage possibility from that end. Then, as you know, we got contours. Then we measured the entire amount of garbage on basically on the, uh, the above the ground level, it was somewhere around one million meter cubes of garbage. Then uh, the honourable president of this country gave a promise to take this garbage dump from Mitrotamulu to another place, but we simply showed him that it's not a very simple task to take this one million meter cubes to another place, and it is one million meter cubes of garbage over the ground and another 2.3 million meter cubes of garbage underneath of that, because it is generally plus or minus 16 meters deep peat layer underneath of this, because it was a paddy field, right? Semi-decomposed and decomposed and non-decomposed garbage is now nicely trapped inside this peat layer, and it's some, something like a very viscous slurry underneath. So you're not in a position to take them out and get this land cleared. Then those are simple techniques, not simple techniques, those are simple to us because these people develop these softwares. These are very simple technique once we have the gradient and the digital elevation models to calculate the amount of the, the volume of the pile and the amount of whatever the material over the ground level. Then we calculated now these while we were doing this, the World Bank experts came with two geoscientists and one garbage dump expert. And he got experience of 30, 35 years in garbage dumps around the world. And they did a couple of calculations. I'll show you those calculations. And they came to a conclusion that if you really cut down the height of this pile down to 25 to 28 meters, that you can stabilize the dump without facing any other secondary collapses. So to simply reduce that height down to 25 meters, you'll have to remove 84,000 meter cubes, which is not a very big problem because you don't have to take it from this point to another point. You can simply level it around the same dump area and stabilize it in that way. So we started getting the cross sections. Those are very simple things I wanted to tell you. I mean, the, the real idea of this presentation is not to show you the garbage dump or talk about the garbage dump, but this is a simple but extremely important operation of a drone. The platform is very vital for us to take decisions and save people. Then this is one of the contour maps we've developed. And peak was 48 meters. And soon after two to three days or four days, it was somewhere around 47.88 meters. There. That means it's still going down. So, and this is another very important thing we have done with 
the building research institute people we were we didn't have any clue about the real the original places these houses were then we took a 2016 december satellite image and superimposed it with our co uh, the geo referenced auto and we have seen these houses you can see these pink color blocks those are digitized houses they were somewhere there but now they are 40 45 46 meters away from the 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 the, the original place that is the drift and with this data army started digging the correct place because they were not in a position to because it's a very new scenario in the country this deep seated failures are not very common in this country people can't understand how it happens this it is it's simply a push and house is there but we were clueless about the people whether they are inside the house or the in at the original place so we started digging these areas and we somehow got 32 full bodies and a leg so those are the cracks we started observing this is a very important thing now when when it comes to a continuous monitoring with drones this is the 15th of april image and this is the same place 18th of uh, april you can see the activity this garbage dump is still active right so this is the wet patch i was talking about we were measuring the wet patch continuously then we put another payload which is a flir which is a flyer camera can go into an inspire and we started getting these images those images are showing the temperature variations or the heat patches on the dump that shows you the anaerobic reactions underneath of the dump and we can correlate that into a methane production as well so we started getting these critical areas high temperature so once we put a gas analyzer we experienced 2 to 3% of methane and you will be amazed 1000 to 1200 ppm of carbon monoxide just underneath of the surface by 50 cm extremely polluting condition carbon monoxide is a deadly gas once army people started working on the dump every other hour they'll have to go and get fresh air otherwise they collapse because of the the two things one is the order of the garbage dump as well as the combustible gases like methane as well as carbon monoxide so with the same data set we shared the data set with the world bank experts they started taking decisions with the data set we provided and they got all the cross sections and modeled the break breakage and came up with the stabilization technologies and the guidelines then this is the leveling mechanism they proposed with the same data set i provided once we level it in this way end of the year the site will be similar to this it's going to be a urban urban usable landfill you can't use it for anything other than just walking and for recreational purposes and it's not going to be a dump site anymore okay that is about the dump site then Professor Rohan Munu Singh was talking about another very very critical subject to this country, which is precision agriculture. And I've started the first precision agriculture, dedicated precision agriculture company in this country under the name of CIC. I'll take you through this small presentation. I'm not going to talk much about this. Agriculture is very vital to this country. and i started working on couple of agricultural research i as i mentioned in the uh, I, when i was in the judge panel we started producing new age fertilizers in in my institute sri lanka institute of nanotechnology then we started developing new age pest killers not repellents killers then we started working on various types of chemical based agriculture inputs but sri lanka as a country we are a very high chemical using country we are using hell a lot of chemicals in our agriculture the general practice in agriculture is this farmer in the morning whether you are a small scale farmer or a large scale commercial farmer we used to go to our field we start observations we simply go 
in our old generation farmers ape paramparika goyo gass ekka katha karana kiyala ekak kiyuwa egolu udeta gihilla gass isara hari gihilla me gass ata gaywa e gass ata gaywa not for observation purposes they had another way of talking to trees and plants we are not advanced enough to understand that relationship we most of us once we learn little bit of science technology and engineering we think it is something some nonsense but it worked but here we started going to our farm started looking at them just to see whether we have pest attack started deficiencies color variations the visual part of it and it's very complex i mean commercial agriculture setup because it is a manual observation it's very slow it depends the output and the decision is depends on the the color blindness or the age of the person and it's costly and destructive most of the times if it is paddy when you go inside the paddy field it's basically a destructive scenario then once we realized that there are some variations we started measuring the variation for that in paddy we have introduced actually batalagod rice research institute introduced with iri iri from the international rice research institute the color chart this color chart shows you the nitrogen set up in the plant so now then once you have once you see some variations or deficiencies or pest attacks we used to go and spray this is the way we do and we change everything with drones we install various types of sensors underneath our drones start simple fly general flying to get this output this is with a general camera your pentam 4 pentam 4 pro 3 pro 34k any drone can do this it's a very good example of using whatever you have to solve a current problem innovation is that the general videography or at a wedding well take him pintura ganna drone neka kumura kuding yawa but this is what you see with this image the real agronomy practitioner can take decisions you can see in field variations you can see mixed plants you can see low plant densities now when i walk in my paddy field in my perspective near the ground everything is the same for me i can't see any variations nillata tiyena hoddata tiyena kiyala api hitang inna but when you go up when we fly in this perspective you can see variations as professor said again if you use this data set or this image properly you can go and do spot applications imagine you fly your drone see these variations go to the place and see then you are in a position to apply whatever the agrochemical or i'm sorry for the word fertilizer or whatever onto the problem areas not everywhere with that you cut down the input cutting down input is cutting down the cost cutting down the cost cost of production reduction is basically the reduction of the end user price you and me is going to get cheaper food then we go into another level we go into multi spectral cameras and we get these images we have a criti- I, I, i'm pretty sure that you are aware of these things ndvi normalized differential vegetative index it's the difference between red and the ratio between red and near infrared with that data we can exactly measure the chlorophyll activity and all the other chlorophyll related data sets can be derived with this data set we are collect there are various other multi spectral cameras it's not important here we put the multi spectral camera inside the drone or underneath of the drone we fly get the data set we come up with this then you can see weed separately high vigor area the same image i'm showing you now the rgb image is now showing you another set of data where you can simply go and take decisions you can see mixed plants weeds and you can identify deficiencies somewhere here no cultivation or plant less or extremely low density areas we can forget about it you don't have to fertilize any more in these areas because you're not going to get anything end of the crop season and high vigor areas you need that then what we do 
is this, we have this drone. We can take that particular image, convert it into a statistically relevant shape file in ArcGIS, ArcGIS platform. We can upload that shape file into this, and you look something like this. Then this drone will simply go up, go and spray according to the need. It won't spray anything into the green area because you have sufficient fertigation or fertilization there with the nutrients. It will spray lesser amount of inputs into the yellow area according to the need and no spraying in the red area because it is no point spraying. Then there is another important thing. Once we fly, we can differentiate your crop and the weed. Once we spot the weed, you don't have to spray weed killers everywhere. You go and either do manual weeding, you can simply take it out, or do selective weedicide applications only onto this point. And the exp the, our experience is basically when it comes to paddy in our farms, we save at least 60 to 65 percent of broad spectrum weed killers with this technique. Then after the Kunukanda problem, people were a little reluctant to go on the Kunukanda because it was simply shaky and it is not advisable for people to go. Then I put, I got this, this is a small engine version. This is not the exact thing, but I got an engine one-fifth model and put a stabilizer platform or small DJI and we started sending that everywhere on the Kunukanda to get images and to take decisions because now on top of the garbage dump daily there are openings creating so we should measure these openings so those are the things I have this is the size I just put we simply do that when the nozzle breaks go underneath of that and create so I must thank for these people Pix4D they are doing a wonderful job in drone spear Pix4D is one of the best uh, softwares uh, for anyone to use. You have cloud version as well as you have the standalone version. Anyone who got a drone can start working on these things. It is not a rocket science. You download Pix4D, plan your mission, fly your dr drone, get your data and simply put data into place and see the variations. You will start seeing a different world. Right? End of the day, this is it. What I really wanted to tell you is these small tiny drones, 200, 250,000 rupee drone, can solve millions of problems we faced in our daily lives. Right? Mapping is not a very prominent thing in this country because we don't do much mapping, but agriculture, disaster response, archaeological surveys, because once you go up, you start seeing a different setup. We have that experience near Sigiriya. We have that experience near Anuradhapura, some areas. When archaeologists and the people who work in that area, I mean, in that particular field, seeing these images, they are amazed. They say, we can take various different decisions now because the pers perspective is different. You can see something very different. So perspective always, the, the altitude and the perspective always gives you another area to think about. That's it. Millions of applications with the simplest drone you have, it is not the complexity. I'll take another one minute to discuss about that particular thing. Now when we judge, I can see thousands of young innovators, entrepreneurs, developers, I have now, we are old people, I have 27 years of experience in this subject, doing something new every day. That is my job. 15 years ago, when I start something, I was simply think in the same way. Mekata monohari kali vadipura amunula lokota hadapuka bangtame meka honda. So unnecessary complexity is very bad. Then your reliability goes down, then your cost goes up, then the affordability goes down and especially once you develop something and when you sell it to the end user the serviceability problems goes up so if you reduce your complexity in your design 
whatever it is, if it is whether it is a code or a hardware design or a service even. Lesser the complexity, you have a great future with your invention. Api hamati sabkarana varad, api me rate tiyana prashya kutti no loku vata tibu no loku gana gyeva no. Loku vata tibu no loku gana gyeva le hinda me podi vata hadana pula me kata loku vata hadana because the buyer is not that tech savvy or no, buyer is not that uh, what they get can ni. Solution ne kata vadiya one show e kani. Api podi da khadala loku vata tiyaka da mo loku gana gana pula. But when we are in the other countries, we somehow try to miniaturize everything in order to simplify it. I think the last thing is don't try to complex unnecessarily things and you should try to understand your important point of your entire scenario. Now, we always mislead. No, you should understand the important proposition of your innovation. That is where the real success is. Thank you very much.